is a glorious morning in late June in Hendersonville, and we have got the wonderful privilege of being with Barbara Loper in her magnificent daylily garden this morning. Barbara, it's so nice to be here with you. Thank you, Sally. I have looked forward to this and uh, in, in various ways, but I am so glad that you're here and I and, uh, hope you enjoy it. How long have you been doing this, Barb? I have um, always liked working outside, but for serious gardening, I probably started in 02 and 03, discovered hybrid daylilies in 03. And, uh, and once I discovered hybrid daylilies, it just mushroomed from there. Barbara, let's start right here. I see just such a stunning combination of, of purple and silver and yellow. Now you've got all of these daylilies also labeled, don't you? I do have. So tell us I what we're have. looking here, at here. Well, the first thing we have here is Dream Blue. It uh, received honorable mention in 92. It's been a while. But uh, then over here we have Newberry Blue Eyes. We have Prairie Blue Eyes that uh, is an award of merit winner. I like the uh, Artemisia. Beautiful companion. Yes. And we just happen to have the pink canna lily there that uh, continues to return each year. So I, I really have come to enjoy this little spot. Now did you tell me that originally maybe you didn't have these daylilies arranged quite with, with with such the the tapestry of weaving those tones in and out, I just started last year trying to do that because in the beginning, mm -hmm. I guess like most gardeners, when you get excited and you buy flowers and you buy flowers, you first of all you put them wherever there's room, and and you don't think so much about how they look with everything else. You just start thinking about what you can get next. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But then when you put them together and coordinate and have them popping off of each mm -hmm. other, it's like wow, wow, and it wow. Is. Yes. It is, and so you, you start concentrating a little bit more on that. I love the other perennials that you've used to complement these daylilies. I see that you've got some tall red bee balm in the back. Mm -hmm. what, what cultivar did you tell me that That's was? That's uh, Jacob Klein. Well, it, it just looks lovely, and it gives you height in the background, and then Coming forward to that, the beautiful yarrow, uh, the coreopsis, just a number of perennials that just help pull it all together and give you such nice texture and interest. Well, they're just, they're, you know, flowers that um, you want some of all of them and, and you just bring in what you can and, and put it together and, and, uh, and enjoy all of it. And so really and truly, once the daylilies are gone, because what, mm -hmm. you know, we've got uh, maybe a month, some right. of the daylilies are actually late bloomers, some mm -hmm. are early, but primarily we're right at the peak of seeing the maximum number of daylilies. That's right, that's um, right. So you do want something when they're gone. Exactly, I see that you've even tucked in annuals here and there, mm -hmm. so that they can certainly be doing their like thing that. once the mm -hmm. daylily Daylilies are gone and you're just enjoying that beautiful strappy foliage. Barbara, I love this room of the garden with the, uh, with the bower as a backdrop. What a wonderful little place to just sit and view the garden. We've just got a magnificent um, grouping of daylilies here and we're standing in front of two that are just um, stunning. This yellow and this magnificent, what do Clothed we call it? Clothed in glory. Clothed, Clothed in, in glory. Mm -hmm. Wow. Describe that as, as a technical day lily for me. What would you say? You know, it, for me, it's kind of hard to know how to put, put it in words because there's so many different parts here. It has a really pretty yellow throat coming out with a sort of a striped or strided mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, burgundy uh, leaf, a, a petal with the uh, ruffled yellow around it. It's just... Uh, that is fantastic. I mean, that ruffled pretty. yellow mm -hmm. edge makes that... I mean, you take one look at that daylily and you know it is extraordinarily special. It, it is a special daylily. And and here with the yellow, that does help it's pick great. up the yellow in the, in the clothed in glory, doesn't it? It does. And then in the background, you've got the beautiful purple iatris coming on uh, that is just, you know, such a wonderful complement with the with the yellow. I enjoy that flower. That's, uh, that, that's a 
a good thing, I think, to have in my garden Oh anyway. my gosh, oh my gosh. And the wonderful salvia right here that'll just bloom its mm -hmm. head off all season it long. Will. Just when the day lilies back a are all bit, finished. It comes back and blooms again, that's There good. you go. Mm -hmm. Barb, I love what you have done over here on the side of the house. Well, thank you, Sally. This was a, a, a really blah area. Yes. And I have a number of watering cans. I love, I I love, love them. This. And so I, I just, uh, oh. just sort of set them there. So you've got color there. Color, color there. Going. That's right. Now tell me, did, you, uh, did I understand you to say that this bed along the driveway was one of the last beds you developed? one of the last for me to get cleaned out where I could even put something in it. It was just full of a lot of uh, vinca, uh, weeds, everything um, that you don't want to have. And I notice now we are in a part of the garden, you've got some wonderful big shade trees, so we're in kind of a dappled mm -hmm. area here, not in the full sun situation, uh, the previous rooms we have visited, and yet the daylilies are still here, they're mm -hmm. doing well, and you've got a number of wonderful other things going on, from oak leaf hydrangeas to a beautiful Japanese maple, uh, containers. You've just got a smorgasbord of just a, a, a preliminary taste of what everyone's going to visit <laughs> when they really get into the garden, huh? Well, I uh, I like kind of like the color combinations here that I sort of picked up from the. Uh, Japanese maple and the uh, oak leaf hydrangea. So uh, these are daylilies uh, purchases from last year because I, I didn't have any place else to put them. I put them there and it's working out pretty well, I think. It looks beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. You've got a little bit of accent of some limestone. Mm -hmm. You've got a few annuals. Uh, once again, you have just done a magnificent job. You may not be a landscape designer. I understood you, you are <laughs> no. a counselor, but you're a natural gal. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, see, that encouragement just may call for another bed, Sally. I don't know. <laughs> so, Barbara, have you finished your vision here in the garden yet, or are you still work in progress? Well, Sally, that's hard to answer because I keep saying, this is it. I must not make another bed. I must not make another bed. And then you know, there are always reasons to come up to make another bed there are. or to redo a, a bed. No, a garden is something that's in progress. It's continually changing. I agree. You have to take things out. You find things you want to put in. So, I agree. you know, this time next year, it, it uh, will be similar, but not the same. I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. Well, this has just been so wonderful, Barbara, to have you share your magnificent garden with us. I'm just delighted to, uh, to have had the opportunity to stroll through the garden with you. Thank you so much again. Well, it has been a joy. Your encouragement has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Uh-huh.